Greetings YouTube, this is Toy Customizer Wake Angel 2001 bringing you part 5 of Robot Week. Um, as promised, each day the figures have been getting progressively larger. You may not have noticed between Arachnid, Rokusho, and Cyberman because they were all, each one was only marginally taller than the one that came before it, but Stell is a huge jump in size. At um, a whopping 10 inches tall, he is almost twice as tall as other figures in the DCUC line. Uh, Stell is one of the um, is one of the Collect and Connect figures, um, a gimmick which is common in several toy lines, uh, uh, similar to the Marvel Build the Figure, and. Um, Stell came with, you know, a piece of Stell came with each figure in a wave of, uh, of the DCUC line, uh, which were, which consisted mostly of Green Lantern characters, uh, names I don't remember off the top of my head. There was, a there was, the, um, the Red Lantern cat and the little squirrel dude with a yellow virus that came with a torso, uh, I believe, um, some guy that, Kind of looked like a um, like Predator's uglier cousin came with a leg. Um, I don't know some dude with broccoli for a head. I I don't really know all the characters. Uh, I know and I don't really collect the DCUC, but I had to have this Stell figure. Um, you may have you may recall seeing him make cameos in some of my other videos, and uh, I mentioned that. Um, I wanted to get this figure so badly that I actually traded him for three custom figures which I made. So yeah, I did that. Um, and he is really tall and imposing and impressive. And he has lots and lots of beautifully sculpted detail. He has he has a uh, robo abs in there and you can see he has like hydraulic pipes that look like they would move him around he has um he has hydraulic lines in his neck he even has robo teeth uh this is just amazing on every single level uh this is just just a just a treat for the eyes and when i turn him around we can see that his back is every bit the sculpt they even they even picked out all the little bolts on him with with paint they they spared no expense on this guy which uh probably explains why you would be spending a minimum of eighty dollars if you tried to find this guy separate i mean buying all six of those figures to build him up would probably run you um pretty close to a hundred dollars each one each one costing, depending on where you go, anywhere between fifteen and twenty dollars. So yeah, if you, uh, but you know that that's just what hardcore collectors are. Sometimes they get they get big figures. To get big figures like this, you got to spend big money, or you know, have something to trade, like me. Okay, so let's get into Stell's articulation. Um. This is a big guy, so keeping the whole thing on camera is a little bit trickier. Okay, so his head. Um, like the Cyberman, his head is ball-jointed and can turn around inquisitively. He can also look up, revealing revealing some nice details in his neck. He has a, he has a robotic Adam's apple in there. Come on, you can do it. There you go. Yeah, it, like when he looks up, there's his. It's not like his chin is revealing, um, you know, joint space. There's actual sculpted detail under his chin, so that there's something to look at if you have him in a looking up pose. Although a figure this tall, it's hard to imagine what he'd be looking up at. Maybe if you got an anti monitor or one of the other build of figures that might actually be taller than him. Um, his shoulder armor is made out of a softer plastic that has some give to it. 
This is so that it does not limit the articulation of his arms. You can move his arms up and knock over my backdrop, which is designed to prevent background objects from cluttering the camera's field of view. Okay. So yes, thanks to the flexibility of the shoulder armor, Stell is not limited in the poses he can do with his arms, which are universal. They go out and around. They can't do a full 360 because even though the armor does flex, it, you know, still is armor. Uh, he has a bicep swivel. Uh, he has a 90 degree elbow. And he has a universal wrist, which is capable of uh, rotating and bending up. So it's, it's really good. Uh, on his right arm, we have the power ring sculpted in. Uh, you know, gotta love, again, even the most minute details are sculpted in on these guys, and I love it for that. Uh, here he has a bit of articulation. He has uh, this thing going on. It goes back a lot more than it goes forward. I think this is for uh, Green Lantern flight poses, because, you know, Green Lanterns can fly. And he has a waist joint. Gotta love waist joints. Hips. He has them. They are very good hips and they move around a lot. As all good hips do. Uh, he has a thigh swivel built right underneath those hips. And a good knee. And underneath his knee is another swivel for the foot right here. And the foot itself. It articulates forward and backwards at the ankle, and it also has some side-to-side -side movement. So he can have a... he can stand flat-footed in a wide-legged stance. You know, because... because it's cool when... when superheroes stand... like... like the ground is shaking. So, um... That's all the basics of Stell. I mean, this is, uh, the, the thing is, um, I don't think he can be dismantled once he's been assembled. Uh, the person who sent it to me, I suggested taking him apart into the components so that he can be stuck in a smaller box to save on shipping. Um, and that's when it, when he found out that that can't happen. You, you, you can't disassemble the figure once it's been constructed, not without risking severely damaging and breaking a highly expensive collectible. So I said, nah, nah, just, just uh, leave him in one piece. Don't want to, don't want to risk hurting him. Uh, if there is a way to dismantle um, DC Build-A-Figures, that might, that might be worth knowing. Uh, after all, I would like to know if Build-A-Figure parts can be swapped around, like maybe stick some anti-monitor legs on this guy, or or um, or metallo arms. Who knows? I mean, if, I wonder if you can even do that. Anyone who knows more about um, DC collecting connect figures than me, let me know if, hypothetically speaking, the parts can be interchanged and you can make weird chimera things out of spare parts. Maybe that's why they can't be dismantled once assembled, because uh, that's to discourage the building of chimeras. Like, if you put Metallo's arm into Stell, he will forever be like that. Can you have that in your collection? <laughs> oh, look at me talking, talking in conspiracy theory speak again. Anyway, this is this is Stell, the robotic Green Lantern of awesomeness and amazing and this really is quite the fantastic figure and uh i don't think they would have been able to put this much detail on one of the regular six inch figures to my knowledge it's really the only depiction of stell that looks like this uh, when the green lantern movie came out and they made um action figures of various green lanterns they made a four inch stell which was based on concept art they said 
But uh, what they didn't say was that the concept art sucked. Yeah, um, let, let, let's end this with let, let's end this with a quick look at uh, that four inch Stell figure. Yeah, doesn't doesn't didn't he just look hideous? Uh, yeah, no, no, no. This is this is the definitive Stell. This is my Stell. I don't care that he's huge. He's a robot. He had himself built into a huge body. Like, yeah, that that that's the great thing about being a robot. You don't, you're not constrained to a, a certain size. Although, um, I'm not sure if built is appropriate, cause um, I read the biography and it still comes from a planet inhabited by robots, kind of like DC's answer to Cybertron, I guess, and like. It leads me to wonder if in the if he ever gets a chance to make a cameo appearance in the Green Lantern animated series. I know it's a long shot since the series has pretty much been announced to be canceled, which sucks by the way because it's one of the really it was a, it's a, like Thundercats. It's a really good show and it did not deserve the axe. And um, yeah, I would be interested in knowing how Stell would react to Aya. Or more specifically, the Guardians' attitudes towards Aya. Because they, after the debacle with the Manhunters, they don't really believe that artificial intelligences are safe. And when they found out that Aya was self-aware, they tried to dissect her. So I would be interested in knowing how Stell would react to that. I mean, I guess you could make the argument that Stell's not an artificial intelligence, because he may be a robot, but... He, um, for want of a better term, um, evolved. So he's a natural intelligence that just happens to be in a robotic body, not an artificial intelligence. Is that 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 that's a significant difference, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I, I guess you could say the same thing for for Transformers. Cybertronians may be robots, but they're not artificial intelligences, huh? And hi theoretically, you can clone a human body and then have a consciousness implanted into that human body. The human body would be organic, but the intelligence in it would be artificial. So an artificial intelligence can live in an organic body. And I just went so far off topic. Uh, this is Toy Customizer, Wake Angel 2001, getting way too philosophical on the nature of fictional things. Uh, stay tuned for the next episode of Robot Week.